Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist at the Tech Travel Geeks, and this is the setup video of the Sony ZV-1 camera that I have previously unboxed here on the Tech Travel Geeks. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. Right then, I've unboxed the Sony ZV-1. It's a impressive camera and surprisingly large, but yet light compared to what I was expecting. I haven't really used a compact camera in around about six years at this point. I have a memory card that I also purchased on Amazon. I'll leave a link to this as well as to the product itself, the Sony ZV-1, in the description. Let's go through the setup. So first things first, I'm going to take my SanDisk Extreme Pro SDXC card out of its packaging. And this is quite user-unfriendly packaging. You do need scissors to get into it. So I'm going to cut in here. A while back, Amazon used to do frustration free packaging for memory cards. That was really quite handy. But at the moment, I'm not seeing that on Amazon. Uh, hopefully they bring that back at some point. Wow, lots of cardboard and plastic there. Luckily, the, the cardboard itself is recyclable. And I'm hoping the plastic is as well. So this is an extreme card from SanDisk. That means that the read-write speed is very, very fast compared to standard micro SD or other memory cards. And that also means that I will be able to record 4K video at a relatively high quality straight to the card. So that's the SanDisk memory card. I'm going to put it into its adapter. So there we go. We have the adapter in place. And I'm going to open up the door on the bottom. There's a very handy little port with writing on it, lock or open. And it's nice, nice little feeling with a clunk in terms of the spring to the door. So I'm going to put the Sony battery in. I'm going to align the contacts with the front facing side of the camera and clip it in, click, easy as that. And now let's see if I can get the memory card in first try. No, let's try second try. Oh yeah, got it the right way around this time. Click. Really simple. So there we go. Lock the camera. Now I'm assuming the battery already has a charge in it. Let's see. So I'm going to put the flippy screen out. Whoops. It's already done. And I'm going to select English. Now I'm assuming I just press on the center button here. Let's set a date and time. Or go back. Where is the back button? Oh, menu button is back. Okay, so London, Lisbon. Okay, that is the correct time zone. Daylight savings on. So you need to use the wheel to roll it, rotate between menus. Date, time not set. Uh, today is the 6th of August. Now this is quite tough. Is this a touch screen? No. How do I move up? Hmm. There seems to be no up option. So if I click enter, up, down to adjust, where's the up, down buttons? Because I have a wheel. Is there an up, down button here? Plus, minus? No, the zoom... The zoom control doesn't seem to do it. Um, play button? No. Oh well. I'll deal with the date and time settings later. Imaging edge. So there's apparently applications available for this device. We'll look at those at a later date. I'm going to not be using that. And initially you get preparing a database and as the camera turns on, the lens comes out. There's a little bit of a grease mark there, but that's not unexpected because this is a moving part. It does need some lubrication. The lens looks good to me. It is quite a deep one, which is great. And let's have a look at other 
features. So the battery is quite low, but we can go through some quick menu settings at the moment. As you can see, I'm looking at the accessories that are on my desk that came with the camera. I can zoom out. This is as zoomed out as possible, or I can zoom in and in macro mode, it's handling everything quite gracefully. You can also, if you wish to, use the flippy screen to change your point of view with regards to what you're doing. So this is really quite a cool feature, one that uh, none of the cameras I've had recently have had, and will hopefully be useful for taking some new angles to, to things. So let's have a look at the menu settings and go and mess around with things. So I'm going to make sure the images we take are in JPEG quality, 20 megapixel images, aspect ratio three to two, Let's see if we can change that to maybe something more useful in terms of taking, say, YouTube thumbnails at a 16 to 9. And the other second secondary camera settings, file format. I'll need to consult our chief aperture officer and find out which one he prefers. I think we're going to go for 4K because he'll be able to do a lot more with that. Record settings, so 60 or 100, 25p, 100m or 60m. I'll need to look out what that actually means. Dual record, and more movie settings. This is going to be interesting. Initial focus settings, audio level display, wind noise reduction. I live in the UK, so yes, please. A steady shot is active, which means that it will be the highest setting by default. Marker display, marker settings, recording lamp, movie with shutter, with shutter. I have no idea what that means. Shutter type automatic, yes, we'll leave everything on automatic as much as possible, and steady shot on, yes. Zoom settings, optical zoom only, normal zoom speed, display, zebra setting, exposure setting, custom operation, so this is for customizing that custom button up there, will give you options to choose what it actually does. So in this case, I'm going to say product showcase set, which will focus on things. So great for when you're speaking to camera and need to maybe go through product feature, showing it to camera, it will focus on the product, which will hopefully be useful in our future unboxings and product reviews. So I'm going to leave that as is and audio signals and write date. Right, moving on. The network, you can connect to smartphone, computer, and PC remote function, as well as setting up Wi-Fi and so forth. So I will do that in the appropriate timing. Playback settings, overall setup, and your personal menu settings, so quick shortcuts. So that's a quick walkthrough of the menu settings and what you can do. I'm going to try taking a quick picture with the shutter button here. There we go, first picture taken with the Sony ZV-1. The next ones are most likely going to be my cat. And there you go. That was quite interesting. Let's have a quick look at the preview. Yes, nice clear screen. You can see that nicely in the Sony LCD display. I'm going to flip this around and then close it and have a look at it from this angle. Yeah, that's a nice, nice screen. So I need to obviously do some charging for the camera and then set it up to take some video, but expect an unboxing from us very soon recorded on the Sony ZV-1. I have an overhead mount for the camera, so this is going to be a really interesting setup. Now I've switched the camera off, 
There was a bit of a delay there in the lens retracting. I probably need to get used to that, but overall, nice camera. The overall feel of the camera is very, very solid. It's lighter than I was expecting, but chunkier. It's, it is a thicker camera. And let's just have one last look at the hot shoe accessory slot. So this is a traditional hot shoe with a multifunction connector. So with specific Sony friendly accessories you can add to your camera. But the accessory it comes with in the box is what some photographers refer to as a dead kitten. That covers that multi-directional microphone at the top of the camera or targeted camera microphone which vloggers use a lot and as I said I live in the UK so having both the software noise reduction from wind as well as a dead kitten is probably advisable but there's nothing to stop me using a separate external microphone and connecting it to the ports on the side so you can see there's a micro USB port and I like this there's a separate flap for each thing this is a 3.5 millimeter or courage port and an HDMI port as well. So very handy, the fact they've separated the three, you don't have to have all three open. It reduces you getting dust or water in there. There's a nice little loop for a camera strap. There isn't one on the other side, so it's a single one. Overall, really good. I'm really impressed, and in a way, this validates a lot of the excellent other YouTube videos that I've been watching whilst making my purchase decision for this camera. So for now, thanks for watching this video of the Sony ZV-1 setup. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We will have some future videos and a full review of this camera coming up, as well as lots of videos recorded using this camera, whether they're unboxings or actual me speaking to camera in the coming weeks and months. For now, thanks for watching. And as I said, please do subscribe to us. Goodbye.